Good morning everyone. Welcome, welcome to my channel. So if you caught my video on Saturday, I started exploring ways of adapting our prompt for the Roxy Creations um, useful items, which was a housewife or a hussif. So I've got a few ideas that I played with Saturday, so I'll bring you up to speed with them and then I've started working on the final of the two projects. But firstly, if you recall, I mentioned that I really would like a little itty bitty pin cushion here for my uh, needle to go into when I take my Jennifer Clouston little caddy. Um, took it away for the first time and discovered that that there would really help my, um, I guess, when I race off to have some dinner or, you know, get distracted and I've got a needle in my hand just to be able to stab it into there, I think would be really handy. And I've also got a couple pins as well already staying there. I just want to put in a blue pin. Let's be colour coordinated. Can't help myself. A green, a yellow and a blue pin. And they can stay in there. They're not going to hurt anything as I was stitching along that top edge with a little slip stitch I even thought that that could even be a pocket in behind there and I thought no 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 stay focused girl don't go changing the plan so happy with that and I managed to actually stitch it on without stitching my pocket closed or catching the contents so yeah if you decide to do that because we're doing it after the caddy is constructed would make more sense to do it prior. Um, just be careful that, you know, you don't catch your work. So really pleased with that. Slight modification to design. Um, I, I forgot to mention too on Saturday, if you want to grab that pattern from Jennifer, her email address is in my description. Just shoot her an email, tell her you're chasing the sewing caddy and she will take you through the process of um, securing the pattern. Okay, this little box, my little fairy box, is going to be used for my applique pins. This little case pops open and scoots everywhere all the time. So to have somewhere for it, really, really cool. So I have finished the little pillow. So I ended up doing some camphor stitch, running stitch, all over the decorative piece that I cut out on Saturday. I then just tacked it to the little satchel of um, walnut, crushed walnut shell. And then I embellished it with a little bit of vintage lace that's been cut off of something. I can still see the fabric that's been caught into the edge there. And then I noticed that on the fabric scraps that was the word Altair, which is um, showroom or workshop. Workshop, I think it is, in French. And I thought, oh, that's rather cute. That really suits. So that little element sits in there just beautifully. I love the weight. It's really helping that to sit. And um, as for my pins, fantastic. Straight in to the cushion. Really cool. So I will transfer them into there at a later date. And of course, we've got walnut, crushed walnut in there to help keep them sharp. So I'll definitely be stocking it up. Now in the lid, if you recall, I wasn't a fan of this blue due to the color scheme. Um, so I'm yet to find some sandpaper. It's all packed up and in the move somewhere in the sheds. So I will get that sandpaper, give it a rough up. That'll help some glue adhere. And um, then I've got this little piece. I think it was this way. I end up putting a little bit of tatting on top. That little piece will just adhere to there. So inside is, I guess, more my color scheme. I love the outside of the box. It matches beautifully. So that will happen at some point. So you'll probably see this flipping around for a while until I get to the shed box that has sandpaper in. At the moment, I'm not covering this. I did consider it. Um, I think I'm going to wait until I see how this adheres and if it's strong, because you can imagine if I rough this up and put a piece of stitching there, if this keeps coming off due to it being, you know, popped into my sewing kit, into a suitcase. I sort of want to know that the um, 
the piece is going to stay there otherwise it's going to be a pain and I'll be constantly trying to attach it so I'm happy that the colors at least match the little guy inside especially once that little blue fellow is covered happy days all right so I'm going to call that task finished just need to find some sandpaper okay so today I want to continue with my little needle book going into my case so as you can see I was fiddling around young Susanna called me and that was the end of that I just started stitching and chatting and um, I thought I'd better stop before we get too far so like first of all I'll tell you what I've all done I created the pocket as discussed on Saturday's video I ended up getting a piece of calico and um, laid the red fabric on top and then just did a stitch around. Then I went with uh, needle and cotton and invisible stitched following those stitches around that perimeter again, but sort of came up a little bit past the red fabric so that it's nice and secure. So I've got myself a little pocket. This is a little curly, I've ironed it, but the glue um, or sandpaper in there and adhere it there will hold that into position so I'm not too concerned. I then went ahead and cut out two uh, pieces of wadding uh, to form the place of which I you know pop my needles and pins and I did using some embroidery cotton, stranded embroidery cotton, I just used four strands and I whipped around with a running stitch on the perimeter the lace that I'm top stitching down now, when I did this one, I ran out of thread, went to find more thread and, and I thought, oh, why don't I put a little bit of lace there? So you can see that's how that came to be. And then I thought I'd better do the same that side because you know how it is. So that's where I'm at. And I said to Susanna, if I don't stop, I'll have this whole, whole little needle Housewife, housewife in a box, finished. So I thought I'd better stop and film. And as I hopped up, I noticed this lace, which I've stitched on that outer edge, is just sitting up a bit. So I'm just going to, before we get too carried away, we're at the embellishing stage. So before we get too carried away, I need to just run a few more little tacking stitches through. Now I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do on the other side. I'm just going to stitch away. Will I put a piece of fabric through there to hide all my stitching? Maybe. I guess I need to make sure that it fits in the tin. So I'll need to load it up as if it's in working order. See if the lid closes. Maybe then, ow, 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 ow. ow. That was in my knuckle. Maybe then see um, if I was to put a piece of fabric on that other side, which I'd love to. You know, how thick will it make it? I've only got a little tin, so I've got to be mindful of that. I haven't technically used my French fabrics, but I know I do have one that's quite thin. Actually, if I can grab my little... Ow. Just run the chair over my toe. See this here? This fabric here is really thin. So if we can pull off another layer of fabric to cover my back, um, and I probably only need it just there because this is adhered to the um, tin. So I can't imagine it's going to add too much more bulk, but we'll see. I would rather have you know, less bulk and be able to put some packs of needles in it. But, you know, like usual, we overload these things. So, yeah, so today I just want to have a play, embellish with some more bits and pieces. So that's nice and secure. I might just stitch that down. I can just see it's sitting up a little bit. Now I've got some tradesmen due and I think they're about an hour away but they might be a bit sooner than that so I thought I'm going to sneak a video 
in with you guys and when I hear them out the front I'll have to go, unfortunately. Let's hope they're an hour away and I get the project finished. If not, it might be a 40 minute video and I'll toddle off and start the day. But I reckon we can get a sneaky video in. Just tack this little lace down. I love these fine little laces. They're great because they don't add too much bulk. They're just something different. Come on, don't be like that. The other thing I did too is I did a running stitch, like an overcast stitch or whip stitch around the perimeter of this piece of fabric. And oh my goodness, it was literally disintegrating in my hand. I'm so pleased I did it. It just, just unraveled. So that gave me the thought of maybe getting some snippets of scraps and in a few odd places just stitch on something that wraps over because, um, yeah, it could do with a little bit of reinforcing. I guess that's going to force my hand on the decision of do I back it or not. So I think we might we might decide that next. Then we'll know if the scrap that will go over the edge to help protect it a little bit will actually include the backing or not. This one feels a lot more organic which is, I'm really liking. Okay, so let's assume that there's a pack of needles in there. What happened to my needles? I threw them right away, didn't I? <clears throat> I won't go crazy because, you know, that's a nice bulky one. Let's assume they're in there. All right, let's assume that there's a few needles in there. At least three, because I usually have my favorite three. And then let's assume some pins. A couple sized heads, some bigger ones, smaller ones. All right, that's pretty much the best or worst it's gonna get. There's no scissors. Having said that, they might fit, actually. Oh, there's an idea. What if the scissors went there? Anyway, stay focused. So we're going to pretend that that's glued and secure into position. Then our little needle book just closes down like so. Oh, there's heaps of room. What if the girl was to add scissors? So if that became a pocket for scissors... What could we put there? Um, don't want to get too bulky. Oh, I found this little guy too. He doesn't suit colours, but he was at the Crafty Squirrel. I don't think I showed you because it actually unwrapped him. That's a needle, needle threader. And in the back there is a snipper that you can cut in the where the wing meets the neck. There's a little blade in there. I have to re-knot this. Ha! Huh, works. Shame there wasn't a red one. So he's going to be great. I don't think the plane people, the security, would pick up on him. But yeah, he was a bit of a score. And I bought him because he matched the tape measure. Maybe that's another project another day. Um... Maybe the scissors can just sit in there because at the end of the day, if I could get scissors in there and a little cotton. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good, guys. All right. I think I can get away with some pretty fabric there. So let's do that next. And like I said, we only need... Um, a thin one 
me if I got my fresh fabrics here. Please tell me I do. Yes, I do. I only need a little bit. Actually, let's have a look in here first. Just don't know if there's anything. Oh, these are from Susanna. They are so thin. Maybe I'll collage a few pieces. Yeah. This is Susanna's fabrics. I don't know if they're French, actually. I think they came from England. What's that? What are you? You're old. This is a Susanna. How much bulk will that put? It'll feel really substantial if I do use it. And go past. So that's what it would look like. Um, such a nice piece. I don't know if I want to, I'm not ready to chop into it. What about, um, hold it guys. I'm just grabbing a container of fabric. I got the lid on those pins. I can hear the dogs whiffing, woofing. Woofing. Surely that's not the tradesman. That's the one I was thinking of because it's so thin. But it's so special. Oh, and it's blue. I'm not going to get a rose easily. That little guy is in a lot of projects that would certainly match. That's too thick. I think I saw a scrap of this guy in here, actually. Oh, it's only a little bit. Does that matter? Probably not. Oh, the length is good. Okay. I like that. The main thing is it goes past that edge. What if I then put a pocket? And then the scissors could sit in too. Is there any linen from France? Yes, there is. Long shape. What else have we got? Keep scratching, girl. There'll have to be something here. Keep scratching. Hop up off your chair. Have a little look. What's that? That's not French. That's an Aussie. That's an Aussie. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, this will be too thick, but oh my goodness, wouldn't that be beautiful? Mm. Will it matter? Probably. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? I could stitch. I'm going to do it. We'll give it a go. I'm going to cut down there a little bit. going to that's naturally wanting to fold so I'm going to stitch through there and make sure that stays at least it'll be a heavy duty pocket I guess for uh, scissors use your words girl Maybe I can stick something in it. I don't know. Oh, this could be a mistake. It could be just way too thick. I feel like that's crooked. But it wants to naturally turn there. I'm going to just leave it. Once I stitch that, no one will ever know that that's a bit. How's your father? All right, let's do it. Please don't be too thick. This is really th thick. But I like it. 
So this little guy will sit there. That's a good way to use that scrap up. This little fellow, I might even trim that back a little bit. Then I can do a little half pocket. Oh, it's going to be so much bulk. What do you reckon? Do you think I've overdone it? I've got it on the wrong side. <laughs> Hold that thought. Reposition. It's got to go there, girl. That's where it's going to go. So I'll probably just invisible stitch that. Oh, can I hear voices outside? Nope. Nope. I'll just take some of the bulk. Might as well do it now. And it's wanting to fold there. There'll be just no way that would be easy to... Um, iron out because it's been folded there for like 300 years probably not that long but you know what I mean so I'll run probably a red stitch along why are the dogs getting excited are their workmen out the front Okay, so that'll be pretty straightforward if this goes to plan. Alrighty. Okay, pretend that that's sanded and glued. My little housewife, she needs some, maybe the scissors would be better in there. You're probably all saying that. Around the other way. Probably need blunt scissors because that's just lethal. They're, they're my like favorite i'd find a little pair that maybe had a blunt end for trouble that way if those security people took my scissors again one would not be mortified so if that went in there where's another one oh i think it's gonna work oh they're not even in there they're in here because it's all about the needles Lovely if I could get a cotton in there. Let's say those big clovers went in there, trimmed down, of course. Let's assume that they are in there. Have I still got the scissors in the bottom? I can't remember. Yes, I do. So there's scissors in there and that... <gasps> Hello. And... I have a fraction of room. Oh, yeah, extra pockets. And you know, I can get rid of bulk, like, you know, I'm being luxurious. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's gonna work, guys. So the plan is to, first of all, invisible stitch along this. Do I need to? Probably not. Let's go straight to the red stranded cotton. Just jumping up to grab it. Twenty-three minutes, so they're still not here. That's actual DMC cotton. That's even better really gone off stranded cotton since I've been doing all this slow stitch you get so spoilt with the thread not splitting but you just don't get every color you need so I always do end up going back to the stranded cottons to search out you know unique colors so I'll never ever ever be out lose them you know get rid of them but I don't use them a lot I'm really enjoying number eight crochet pearl cotton they must be having a manufacturing surge. They'd be wondering what's going on. Now I'm gonna stitch this separately because I don't want my big stitches sneaking through to the front wherever I can help it. So I'm going to do any decorative top stitching 
on it before it gets probably has made it thicker than it needs to be but I don't care I love it to have a piece of French linen in there it's a bit special it certainly matches my um, pouch now I did really want to have a bit of a French theme through all of these prompts if I can so to have this matching, it's not a bad thing. I'll just whip along this edge with my little running stitch. It's very thick. Probably didn't need to turn it over, but it'll look better. Riveting viewing for you all. Okay. Yep, love it. Not only just do the one line of it, I sort of like the look of just the one. We'll see. Who knows, I'm just gonna stitch. Or oh, I could do some decorative stitching on the pockets. Like here, here we go. Now it just turns into bigger than Ben-Hur. I'll go as long as I can filming. There's one of my hairs. We don't want that. Yeah, I'll go, it'll be a time capsule. I'll film as long as I can, and then it might be a case of I'll toddle off, sort these tradesmen. And then maybe I can get a bit of stitching done this today, a quiet moment, and then come back and show you it finished. That might be how this video rolls, but we'll see. They said they were going to toot the horn when they were out the front so I can open up a gate for them. So I hope you are all well. I hope you're all stitching something or at least having a a cookie cup of tea coffee just relaxing that's what it's all about okay and this point we decide do we keep going i don't think i will you know I just like that one line. Just keep it simple and then invisible stitch it the rest of the way. I might just trim that back so I don't see it. Ow, seriously. Okay. This little guy is gonna go onto there. And it's all about slithering through the layers to secure this. I might even will I run a line along there. I don't know. How fancy do we want to get? Oh, you know, I was also going to put some scraps on because I've got all these scraps here. And I thought, well, I had the thought of um, this one. I was playing with this, doing some patches of fabric over it, but that all looked fine and dandy this side, but it doesn't look so good that side. So scrap that idea, change mine. I think I will stitch along here with a decorative red stitch. And I think I'm gonna do it up there. So it sort of feels like it's you watch, I'll end up going there and then through there. Which probably is not a bad idea, but keep going. Let's do it again. Oh, I'll go down the side. See, I told you, can't help myself. It's 
very boxy looking. Ah, uh, why not? We'll give it a little bit of feature. Maybe once I do this, I won't need that. It's possible. I wonder if I can work out where the fold is and then do a decorative red line, but Invisible stitch it actually into the little booklet because I don't want to come through. I'm trying to be sneaky with my stitches so that it doesn't make it obvious of how I constructed it wherever I can. Try and hide, hide how I did it so that in the years to come, remember I made a comment on one of the videos that they're going to be in history going, look at all these uh, needle rolls that have popped up in history. <laughs> Peppers barking. Could that be my? No. I thought it might be the. Nope. Just give us another half an hour, guys. I'm talking to the tradesman. So let me know in the comments if you decided to make a non-traditional needle roll into a box. It's been a great prompt. It's been lovely watching all the videos of historical information, you know. That's as crooked as a dog's hind leg. Does not matter. Yeah, um, gosh, you type it into YouTube and you can watch all sorts of historians. Historians, hist, oh my goodness, I'm still congested, as you can tell. Yeah, um, learning a little bit about the history and how these were often made by folks traveling or going to war and Love letters were stitched into them. Oh my goodness, talk about break your heart stuff. I might just stop there because that will be glued into the base. So no use wasting my precious red cotton. Now, can I work out where my fold is and do a little decorative... as a guide don't hold me don't hold me to it once it's opened up no one will know if it's true I might actually be oh goodness me Go from the bottom. I think I can catch. Oh no, don't do it, girl. I'll be able to catch the decorative fabric that's at the top, but this just is no grace in it to allow you to slither through it. It is either you're in through, considering how thick it is, you think you could, but make sure it's crooked. <laughs> I think I've 
Yep, there's a phone. I better go, guys. I'm going to stitch up there, stitch that down, and then um, I'll be back and see where else I go from here. See you in a moment. Hi, guys. I'm back now. I started filming the first 35 minutes last week. I think it was Saturday. Five days have gone by. I know that was one hang of a doorbell ringing. No, it was the phone rang. That's right. I was waiting for a tradesman and the phone rang. So I paused the video and literally five or four days has passed. Oh my goodness. Like, I tell you, we've just been so, so busy getting the property ready in uh, Brisbane for market. So I just did not get into the, the room. And every time I thought I could get a bit of stitching done, something else was going on somewhere and... There were plumbers and electricians and bandit and pepper constantly needing to be moved from safe don't zone to safe zone because oh bandit kept stealing there was been a painter here kept taking the paintbrush <laughs> oh the dog he's so helpful the sparky turned around and his pliers were missing so i had to go and find them it was just a circus so everything's gone quiet now the house is ready we're still moving out but there's not, here comes Fudgy. There's not a lot left inside now, just enough to sort of basic living. Even my craft room has been shredded. I've sent everything in boxes up bar the immediate projects I'm working on. It's now lean, lean times. And I tell you, if this table goes that I'm working on, I'm gonna be in a trestle, on a trestle table in the garage with my filming. So stay tuned, that possibly could happen. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of keep moving it out, keep moving it out. Real estate came through, so we've hired a uh, real estate agent and pretty much at the end of April, we'll be on the market. So I've still got a bit of time and I'm gonna madly film some videos over the next week because Gaz has taken a load of furniture up to the other house as he's got some tradesmen that are gonna be there for the next week. So I've got peace and quiet, there's no one coming, and I'm going to enjoy at least four or five days of stitching and, um, yeah, get some filming done. So I can't wait. I'll, um, I won't tell you what I'm all filming because you've, you've got to catch up to me. I've still got a, a few videos in the pipeline that you're yet to watch, but, yeah. Oh, gosh, I feel like I'm finally getting a break. I can't believe five days has gone by since I hit the pause button. Just unbelievable. Anyway, like I said in the last video section, um, the plan was to stitch all that down, which I did, finish stitching through there with invisible stitch. So everything is secured. And then I got to here, and I think someone called, but as I got to here, I was like, oh, I could do a little bit of embellishing. Before I go and seal that pocket up, I had the brainwave that I would rummage through my scraps and find a little something, something to go on that corner. So that's where I literally down tools. Oh, it's just too big, but gee, it's a bit gorgeous. Yeah, so I literally down tools and now I'm back. I can't wait to get some stitching done. So for you, this video is Tuesday. I'm filming it Monday night. So I've got to get this project completed, get it uploaded so that you can, guys can watch it Tuesday. So that's where we're at. This was a little flower thingy <clears throat> that I made out of some lace. Do you think that's gonna add too much bulk. Let's just re-familiarise ourselves with the project because I feel like I've been away so long. I can't believe how much is missing from my room. Oh gosh, I hope I haven't packed something that I'm going to regret. What am I doing here? Which bit goes where? That goes there. You just know it, don't you? You go and slim everything down for travelling and I'm not travelling, I'm just sending it north and there'll be something for sure. I even sent my buttons. If I need a button, it's gonna to have to come off of a shirt because I have no buttons. <laughs> it is very lean in here. I still have all my threads and I've got my beads and I've got my scrappy bits, so I should be fine. 
Yeah, I don't think I should add too much, you know, because by the time I put something in those pockets, I need to be very, very careful. So, what else is in here? I think that's too bulky. Here, yeah, there we go. That's what we need, just a bit. Pussy, what you doing, fudgy? Come here, puss. So yeah, it's just fudging me. Hang on, I'm gonna pick him up. <clears throat> Gaz is gone for the week. Fudgy and I spending Easter together by ourselves. Hey, Fudge. It's about 9.30 at night. Finally got the van packed, Gaz on the road. It's raining and I hope he travels safe. I'm sure he will. But Fudgy and I are spending Easter together, aren't we? We have to. What have you got on your nose, Fudgy? Got some cotton. Of course you have. Ah, put the pussy cap down and get focused, Corinne. Oh my goodness, I just have to get this video made, uploaded so you guys have something to watch Tuesday. Then I need to make my video for Wednesday, which is going to be showing you Susanna's panel and what I did and sort of introducing the next video series connected to the Village Life panel. You've had a few sneak peeks, so it's officially on her website and is available. She did announce it a couple of days ago on her channel, so I wanna take a moment and um, show you properly. So I'll make that video next and that one you will see on Wednesday. If you want a bit of an early bird shop, head over to Susanna's channel, which is Vintage Blend Studio. Have a little peek at the panel. And um, yeah, you can purchase it on her little website, which is connected to her channel in the description. I'll have all that anyway on my video, so. You'll, and we've got, she's got plenty, she's got plenty. And even if she sells out, because we've used an Australian company to print out panels, um, we can get more printed. It's fantastic. So never fear, there's plenty of panels. So don't feel like you might miss out. <clears throat> so yeah, that's all very exciting. I'll do that video next. I just need to get this little guy finished. So back on to task, in this time that I've had gallivanting and working on the property, I got to our hardware and I bought some sandpaper. I had three to pick from and I picked the coarse one, that one there, um, fine, medium and coarse. So I figured I'd go for the roughest one. I did ask the young fella stocking shelves there in that painting section if he thought it would be okay and he seemed to agree. So before I turned on the camera, I sanded the top here. Remember there was a blue image on here? Um, I gave it a light sand, fantastic. Really, really worked well. And then I've applied some glue and that's actually stuck. And then I loaded it full of my applique pins. So now I have a little box dedicated um, to holding these little pins. So I'm super, super keen to play with that because these are just flip flopping everywhere. See, already I didn't close it properly. And I've got pins everywhere. That's why I need a case, see? <laughs> So this project that the girls have had us all focusing on, the Roxy Girls, has just been an absolute blessing because not only have I made myself the horsewhip or needle roll sewing kit, I've actually thought about other things that I need on my desk and that little box is going to be so handy. And this little cutie, this little itty bitty horsewhip in a little box, it'll just be great to take with me on, um, <clears throat> you know, say you're in a car and all you've got your handbag, well, I can pop everything in here, even a little pair of scissors, and I'm set to, you know, do some stitching. So pretty pleased with this. I was watching Sonia, hello Sonia, Sonia's video, Sonia Steptoe is the name of her channel, and she is making a box. I'm so enthralled. 
<clears throat> that was something I did consider doing, but I just ran out of time. By the time I went to Ballarat and visited Susanna and the retreat and then all of this house stuff, I just haven't had time. So I hope to play with that one day whenever I'm thinking, hmm, what will I make? That little box might just be. So I'm really enjoying seeing Sonia's video. So um, awesome work, Sonia. Very, very good. So yeah, that's that's the latest. I can't believe, like if we, I'd continued filming, you know, just yibby yabba, but literally a week has gone by. There's so much has happened. Oh, so much has happened. So yes. <clears throat> now, Fudgy wants me. See, we were sitting in the lounge room I was catching up on some YouTube videos and then it was actually uh, an incident down on the main road from our street and all my neighbours were like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? There's lights and ambulances and fire trucks. And so I found out what was going on. A young person has come flying down the, the road because <clears throat> it's raining. He's lost control. He's hit the curb, the side of the road. He's then gone airborne through a fence and I'm talking a big brick fence. He's then ended up in their front yard, which um, he's then thought, well, I'd better get out of here. So he's done a few wheelies to try and get his car going and has skidded again, fudgy, and um, <clears throat> has hit a pole. I think it's a flag pole because they do have one on the front of their property, but it could be a power pole, I don't know. So yeah, literally Gaz drove out Everything was settling down. Hey, Fudge, he's back here. Everything was settling down. Fudge was on my lap. I was watching some YouTube thinking I better hop up and finish this project and get this video up for you guys for tomorrow. <clears throat> and then the phone starts pinging and it's the neighbours. What's going on down the street? You know how it goes. Something exciting happens. So I hope the poor kid is okay because I think he had a pee plate sticker on his car so i hope he wasn't speeding and it was just a case of young fella or young girl learning to drive not quite sure of dark night not many street lights rain slippery road doesn't take much to you know go airborne and slip slide you've got to be careful so i hope they're okay there's a lot of emergency services down there. Two, two fire trucks, two ambulance, lots of police. They've closed one side of the road down. Some of my neighbours were passing at the time because they're picking up kids from, you know, basketball and swimming and they're out and about gathering kids. So that's how everyone in our street knew that some something had happened the property they've hit is the one that runs behind all of us in our street they're our neighbor but they run at the back of our boundary they're the ones with sheep they're the ones that pepper would love to go and visit concentrate on what you're doing here girl we don't want big dogs tooth stitches because you'll they'll show they're the ones that pepper likes to go and visit if you can because they got sheep. So yeah, gosh, how scary to be sitting in your lounge room and you hear someone go through your front fence. I can't even imagine, let alone the kid. Oh my goodness. I bet he had the bejeebas and scared out of him. I hope it was innocent and he wasn't being a silly idiot. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm sure the gossip will travel in the next day or so and I'll find out all the news. But I hope everyone's okay. So yeah, Fudge and I had settled in for the night. Gaz is about an hour and a half out of Brisbane and I said, Fudgy, let's let's go into the craft room. Next minute, you know, cars going through the air. So that's why Fudgy's bellowing. He's like, uh, what's going on? We were comfy on the couch. He's now sitting on the 
chair, one of the dining chairs just outside my door glaring at me. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Actually, have I fed the cat? Maybe that's the issue. Yeah. Hang in there, fudge. <clears throat> That's, that's actually could be it. Maybe his bicky bowl's a bit. Did you hear that? Fud Fudgy. Yeah. Because he's been napping for about an hour and a half. I bet he went out, checked his bowl, and it's a bit low because he had dinner, you know, a couple of hours ago. Or he's like, come on, mum. Back to the lounge room. What else has been happening? Oh gosh, so much. I'm sure I'll catch you up to speed. Yeah, puss puss. My flu feels better. I still found, sound a little nasally, but I actually feel really good. And considering the amount of work I've done in the last five days, it was definitely a head cold and not, you know, anything really serious because I've worked like a woman soldier packing and cleaning and scrubbing and uh, all to get this agent through <clears throat> so that um, Gaz could then go for a week and we at least got an agent sorted, you know. So now we can settle back down into just gently packing and scrubbing. And <laughs> so it was a mad, mad push to get us there, but we got there, agent sorted, so... I think there'll be a bit of paperwork to sign in the next day or so. I think that's it, guys. Like, I can't go too too crazy on it because it'll just be too bulky. We want to be able to use it. So, yeah. That I will put a light sand in there. Let me grab my little thingy and see if that'll work. Ooh. It's not the best on the years, so look away now if amazing if this annoys <clears throat> annoys your earbuds earbuds ears that's pretty good gosh gets rid of that shiny now I was going to use PVA glue but that got packed I thought didn't think that through Corinne I a scrap piece of fabric that I can clean that with no Who's going to sacrifice fabric? Not this little girl. But I do have, I was cleaning the windows just nearby. Just use that. Look at that. Oh yeah, it feels really gritty. So what I did with this little one, <coughs> fudgy, puss puss. So he's climbing through all the cabinets opposite my desk because all the stuff's gone. So he's like, what's this? This is all new. Fudgy, come on. Puss, 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 pussy, oh, he's naughty, he's not listening to me, do cats ever listen? So I've used um, my glue stick and then a little bit of art glitter glue and that's, that is stuck, so I'm going to do the same, <clears throat> worked a treat, so I'm just going to pop that in there, if it does come out, um, by the time I get myself up to the, my new place and find the box with the glue in it, <laughs> I can always do a quick repair job, but I'm going to be very generous with my glue. I'm really happy with this brand. It, it does so much. And then to really make sure that we have a good connection, I'm just going to put art glitter glue. Hey, puss puss. In here, we'll pop it in, and then I'm going to say goodbye and sit on the couch with my catch, sit on the couch with my fudge. It's been a big couple days, and I'm going to have a little rest. I think I'll go to bed early because, yeah, I know, fudgy. See, there's a special way to put it, I don't think so. I really want to make sure that corner is caught because that's the corner that was curling up on me. And I know I've got room on that seam. So, yeah, I'm coming, baby. Just 
give me a minute, darling. Yeah, I need some quality fudge time. Find a movie. Hey, fudge, I think we'll be asleep in no time. Oh, put the lid back on. Yeah, I know. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's definitely wanting some attention. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's not moving. It's nice and flat. Little pocket. Then our concertina hoose whiff goes in and in. Oh, and there's my little tab to pull it out. I've got a couple pockets if I need them. Oh, baby, I'm coming. Oh, my goodness. He's demanding, isn't he? There's my lid. My lid. There we go. I do need to get my labels off. That's a bit yucky there. So I'll get my hairdryer out, remove my labels. I'm going to call this project done. The Hooswiff itself, the roll that I made earlier in the month, it's gone up to Barham. So I can't even bring that out. So I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say good night. Um, so you're seeing this video Tuesday. I don't have any video yet up for Wednesday or Thursday. So Wednesday will be the, um, show you the panel that Susanna's released for, um, her village life project. And then I actually filmed, I know I've told you all this before, but there might be someone who's just stumbled on me. I actually filmed the process of making that panel. Gosh, I started that last year. So I had planned to release the first part one of that series um, on the 4th of April after Easter. I'm going to bring that forward. So the whole series, I think there's 10 videos, is going to slide forward one week. That way I can have a bit of a break. You guys will have something to watch. Uh, Good Friday, I'll be taking off. I've got a few functions, so... Happy Easter to everyone. And then Saturday, I started a rabbit on a panel. I uh, filmed two episodes of that um, uh, about three weeks ago in the prep for Easter. So you guys can start watching on Saturday part one. And then I think, I'm just looking at my diary. <clears throat> I think, think Easter Monday will be part two. Um... Tuesday, the calendar for April part one will kick off and it's the pairs of Susanna's project. Fudgy's now walking across the bench at the back. And um, yeah, and then we'll bring in Village Life part two, something like that, unless I think of something else brilliant in the meantime. So that at least gives me a bit of a week that I can get filming and start autumn because we've now into autumn. And uh, well and truly in autumn, it dawned on me with Susanna that my summer project actually went a month over. So autumn actually started a month ago and I was still stitching summer, but I don't care. There was so much stitching in that and I was thoroughly enjoying it. I just kept, kept going. So I'm really looking forward to getting into autumn. So yeah, so that's how the next week is going to roll with Easter and all. So yeah, look after yourselves. And for those of you who celebrate Easter, happy Easter. May you have lots of yummy chocolate and look after yourselves and cuddle your loved ones. So yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow in the next video, which will be all about Susanna's panel from Vintage Life Studios, not Vintage Life Studios. Oh my goodness. Vintage Blend Studios. Fudgy, get off the bench. He's on the bench. Hang on, guys. Hold that thought. You've got to get the cat. Hold on. Hold on, Fudgy. Don't jump. Come on. Come on, baby. Come and say hi to everyone. He's an old boy. He can't be jumping. Let's put Fudgy here and say hello to everyone again. Come on, sit down, Fudge. Yeah, he's an old boy now. He's 17, so we don't want Fudgy jumping from great heights. He thinks he can, but he can't. So I'm just going to show you his gorgeous face and then we will say goodbye say hi everyone you saw pepper and bandit in a video a couple days ago 
and that was them eating my picnic furniture. Hey, baby. Hey. Yeah. I'm celebrating Easter with my mum. Just us two. Yeah. All right, guys. He's getting annoyed. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Don't pull the bench off. All right, guys. I'm going to say goodbye before the cat destroys the place. And we're going to go and sit on the couch. All right. Look after yourselves. Thanks, Rachel, Sarah, Juju, for fantastic project. Awesome. Keep up the good work, girls. Bye.